Hello, my name is Ayu. Um, I study computer science at Loughborough. I'm a final year student, and this is getting personal with Team Upside. So I think for the personal statement, I think it's a case of where it's the first time many of us have ever had to write about ourselves in that kind of first person sense, and it typically it's been whether your teachers writing your reports about you, parents even in. So for me, it was actually, a, the difficult process was actually writing about myself, like exactly what makes me me, what am I actually good at? And even if I am good, how does it make it sound where it's not a very simple kind of primary school level where it's not like, oh, I'm good at this, I'm good at that. It's kind of putting it into a coherent way that says, oh, okay, this is an apt description of me. Mm -hmm. And I think beyond that as well, Oh, well, mustn't remember, mustn't forget the first part of it is always making it personal, isn't it? Now, we all know there's going to be a general format, but those were the two difficult parts in terms of writing about myself, especially because at many, I'd never had a job before, also, even I'd never even done a CV as well. So, this was like the first real, real entrance into doing any of that kind of self, self kind of self advertising almost, you know, how do yeah. I go about advertising myself to people? So, that was one of the most difficult parts. So the biggest source was actually my brother and one of his friends. So they were two years ahead of me going through the process and we're now in second year of uh, second of slash first year of university. So I think they were great in terms of they had done this, but what I remember he always used to say is that they had progressed through, or at least his friend, they had progressed through that, you know, personal statement. Now they are writing, you know, um, cover letters, ETC. So anything everything they gained from there kind of was just added on to the extra level. And so it was really the perfect place to learn from in terms of this is how it is and this is how you kind of progress it further. So I think mine was written down into five, I think five paragraphs, I think I kind of break it down into. So the first one was like an introduction, but it was just like an introduction into the degree or some people did it with like a little, you know, quote or something. But I kind of just took very one line about just computer, computer science in general. It wasn't too, nothing too cringy, but nothing too in depth. It was just a nice little interest that kind of intrigued, intrigued me and led into the topic that intrigued me in the degree. Mm -hmm. So then the second part was then to further run the introduction, isn't it? It was more about, you know, which, which text had I done research on, which part specifically interested me. And I'll get onto that a bit later on. And then it was just kind of comparing and contrasting each, whichever text and whichever points I'd kind of written about in that paragraph. Then the second one kind of leaned into my A-level subject. So that was one of the things that actually I like. I, I do remember not, I didn't, I didn't write about every single A-level subjects I did. So I did A-level business, computer science and maths. I felt the business wasn't so relevant, or at least I wasn't able to articulate what I learned in that from that subject that would make sense in the personal statement. So it's not a case of just writing about, you know, whatever subject you're studying. It's about the ones that are relevant mm. and pertinent to the course you're going to be applying for. So um, I think the one thing that I, I remember doing or somebody was, so there was two advice that I actually quite good doing. I think one was the way show, don't tell. Mm. I think was a good one. You show sure don't tell in terms of rather than saying I'm a, I'm fantastic at this, you know, you say you demonstrate, you know, you demonstrate by so and so what you did, isn't it? It's kind of implicitly kind of um implicitly kind of said already in what you in when you're when you're writing it out. Um the other advice was actually the other way I did it was instead of just talking about the subject as well, I kind of just honed in on a specific aspect. Mm. So in this case, it was off the back of reading a little extract from um, in like algorithms of a question and so from that I kind of just piggybacked off that ex one specific part of it which was just algorithmic bias isn't it and I guess I obviously we're limited by word constraints limited in there so I was just kind of talking about what I got from that and just especially how how to go about you know um, minimizing that from a developer's point of view or I was just talking about how I'm very much intrigued and how do we go about how does it actually encounter its way into the project and how do, where where are the key points that if we notice it early enough we can kind of reduce its impacts and so those were the common key ones because i think some people maybe just talk about you know the subject as a whole or you know in a, in a broad comprehensive outlook and i guess it's more I think, I think it's more interesting if you're able to just hone in one specific like almost like a monopoly of one one specific essence of the subject and you just because you don't have, because of the way it's structured, you don't have the ability to write, you know, long piece and pieces. So it's mm -hmm. better to just say one little bit and then they can say, okay, this person's at least done his extra research and this is actually something 
he will come here to learn because we offer this in our modules or by way of by way of discussion it will come around so it was him um, it was the sentence it was like i talked about so the near ubiquitous use of algorithmic driven software in both in both the hyper visible element in, in people's everyday life demands closer inspection of what values are prioritized in these automated decision making and we need to start holding ourselves accountable in how do we go about minimizing these effects and i'd love to be so and so and i talked about how i'd love to be understanding just how we how we come about with these biases inside the algorithms and what we can do moving forward yeah 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 what about that particular sentence do you think what do you like about that sentence the most reading it now again i think it's the lack of jargon terms i use firstly i yeah. think i don't really use too many jargon terms i keep it very much you know like that because i don't i'm not even fully sure who reads the the person so whether it's a technical person or not but the lack of jargon terms actually is quite good there just the fact that i'm saying i'd love to explore further into this yeah and i i give an opinion in saying that we demand closer expen- expansion into that as well into into that as well yeah so i was actually i think everyone I, you've always heard one of the the best ways to make it personal to you know round off your personal statement if you know a book you talk about what you learn from it cross compare with other other part of a text you've read also but i don't know some of the books i was reading were just a bit too a bit too jargony they weren't really they were very very full-on and not not accessible for i guess where i was at at that point so i kind of shifted into maybe reading more academic like academic um reports and ventures so they they because they usually start from like a top down a top down version where they have you know the executive summary at the start where it kind of breaks it down and that's a lot more because you don't actually even need to go through the whole thing you kind of read so and so and then you kind of li- read read the links at the bottom so that was where I kind of compromised because I knew I was I wasn't going to retain enough of what was going on here so I I, I skipped the book I did that but thankfully I had a good balance of experience yeah. Okay, so I was able to kind of keep it 50-50 now. But I think for computer science specifically, I think there's a better balance on just more experience and technical projects. I think most more time people will have project and um, coursework in there, whether it's in second or whether it's in first year six or second year six. Or, but when you're going about it, and one of the best ways is even just talking about, you know, the projects you actually assigned for your coursework and talking about the challenges you faced in that, not in some brief one, not in some long-winded, um overview just a very quick now i was developing the library management system and I, there was a point where i struggled with working with the apis api of another of um one of them um, i don't know the british library's api to, to to collect data about the book so you can just kind of talk about how you went about that so i think there's a great emphasis on that and rather than i guess reading a, an excerpt or a whole book okay okay great yeah i think your your advice about reading an, a journal like a journal instead of reading an entire book is a good one because like you said you can read the summary at the beginning the abstract the introduction um also would, would you recommend articles like articles online about um computer science about technology do you think those are helpful see i think that in some cases because but the problem with, i guess and tech journalism as a whole is some some don't really understand what they're talking about in some cases so you have to be very careful with them i think you're better off reading the article and then maybe trying to find a quick journal blog about what they're trying to talk about or explain because and even sometimes when you're going on where they're finding out where they're coming from so because sometimes there's a lot of agenda based um, and yeah. in what they're writing as well so i think you just have to be careful with the articles and especially when it comes to to, to tech yeah i think coding's a fantastic fantastic um um skill to have and to to actually begin practicing because you kind of do it in your daily life you just maybe don't kind of realize it i think one of the best examples my teacher always said is when we started our, our first um computer science lesson was literally how many people had been done coding like majority of the class but they end up but then you'd see he said no you have if you just imagine you trying to make um your tea isn't it you follow a set of steps every single time you do it isn't it obviously there's some variations depending on what you have available but it's just applying that same thought process and now i guess in the digital sphere or with actual language that's given to you so i don't think i think people should recognize look at it like that and kind of realize oh i do this if not almost on a daily basis and then say this is just another thing that i just have to learn the language first and foremost and then the thought process 
is is there already 